welcome back to Heart of the Holt. We're here with another new signing. I'm joined with Dan Wiseman. Dan, we finally got our man, Ollie Watkins. Yeah, bro. It's big day, big day. We're going to remember this one for a, a little while. It's, yeah, hopefully, it's it's a real uh, turn of the tide of what's been a, a pretty unfortunate string with our strikers, haven't it, really? I mean, Tammy yeah. stood out, but since then, I mean, I mean, we love Wes here on this podcast, obviously, but, you know, it's unlucky what's happened to him. And, you know, hopefully this is the one to, to really break the chain. And um, it looks like it could well be that, mate. It could. Very good season last season uh, for Brentford, even the season before. Uh, 25 goals last season with three assists. Uh, being Brentford's main man, obviously people who are watching this video will know all about Ollie Watkins. I'd hope anyway. Uh, you know, you should all have a good knowledge of Brentford players because we're going to sign them at one point, guys. So, you know, what are you doing yeah. if you don't know about Ollie Watkins? Uh, you know, can play on the wing, has converted himself to a centre forward. Dean Smith has said plenty of times before he sees Watkins as a centre forward. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to see that we've got the option for him to play on the left or potentially on the right. Um, and it's, it's a nice story, really, with, with Watkins, isn't it? With how he's, you know, risen through the ranks himself uh, from Exeter to Brentford, now to Villa, playing at, you know, a massive club in the Premier League. He's been getting in some big numbers. And mm -hmm. it's just a really exciting signing, Dan, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, man. I like the versatility that, that he offers us. I think, as you said, as, as the nine is, is where we're going to see him. And, um, He's done really well there this season, you know, it has to be said, you know, if, if I was looking at his stats on uh, on who scored just before we, we came on, his average slides uh, a 7.29 match rate in there. He averages, a, this is what really interested me, is, is that he averages a key pass every 60 minutes, um, which I think is, is really important. And um, I was comparing that to the likes of Wesley, who, who was, uh, in his short period of Villa was at about 160 minutes. Or, or something like that. So Matters was uh, around the similar mark. And so he's got this ability. And I think that's where, you know, it's, it's come from his playing on the left-hand side and playing as a winger where he's, he's so inclined to get other players involved and uh, bring other players into the game. But he, he's got that real knack when he gets inside the box. You know, as, as we were saying on the last podcast, mate, 26 goals in the championship. Sorry, in all, in all competitions last season, all from open play. And, that, and that's, what, yeah. that's what really impresses me. Um, I think it does sort of create another sort of uh, I think when the problem is is that we don't have an outright penalty taker mm -hmm. and I think if, if we do sign another striker to go alongside Watkins then I, I think we need to address that because we've seen Jack has a little issues with it and Ali Watkins wasn't the penalty taker at Brentford and that responsibility usually falls on the striker but when we're talking about responsibility and, and pressure mate it's, it's a big fee involved and when you're coming in assuming to, uh, to pick up, um, you know, to be the lead striker for uh, Aston Villa at a club like this when the fee could rise to about £33 million. That's, that's a heavy weight on a 24-year-old shoulder, isn't it? It is. And I think, uh, sorry, as my face has kind of got a bit darker there, the sun's setting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think with Watkins is, as I say, it's, it's the journey. And with players like that, it's very rare that they don't you know they're not able to make that step but obviously there are cases but you know when you're looking at how well he's done uh you know I, i'd like to you know compare his mentality to that of conor hurahan who mm, sure so has opinions of the fans but uh you know has has more than held his own in the premier league last season um which is really important and i think as well as as we kind of touched on with the versatility when big wes is back we've got someone who can play on the left which then means Jack can play in the middle. Uh, so, you know, that's, again, one less thing to worry about. Um, I just think as well, the most important thing is, you know, with modern football, there's, there's directors of football, there's, you know, there's, there's constantly agendas uh, with, with people who want to sign players. Uh, not, the manager doesn't always get the players with what he wants. If you look at, you know, last season, I can't imagine Wes being uh, on, on the top of Dino's uh, you know, list of strikers to buy, especially after he just had Tammy Abraham for the best part of of seven months himself uh, from arriving. Uh, and, and certainly Trez, I know he says he's gone out to watch Trez in the AFCON, but I, I don't believe that at all. Mm. Um, so it, it, it's important that Dean's got his man. This is the striker that he's wanted uh, for, you know, well over two years now, for, for mm -hmm. a very long time. Uh, and it's just important that, you know, promises that are being made are being kept and 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 we finally signed a forward Dan this is the thing there's been a lot of links obviously we've signed cash fantastic signing another championship player um linked with Emmy Martinez again that's picking up uh 15 million pound bid has been reported 
uh, for that with Arsenal looking for, for 20 million. But it, it, it's just important that we're actually addressing the area that I'd say probably needs addressing the most, really, which is the forward line. Yeah, for sure, mate. And look, you know, I haven't just come on this podcast to wax lyrical about this deal. Uh, I do have my, not not concerns, concerns are strong. Um, I, I think the fee is, you know, if it does rise to £33 million, I think that's a little too much. Uh, I think, you know, as we were talking about in the last podcast, mate, that's just Brentford being able to man, demand the fee that they want. And I think you, you touched on a good, really good point there, mate, actually, about this being Dean's man. And I think that's why we have paid so much for him. I think yeah. the, the, the club is sort of aware that how the... Um, the dynamic worked with Suso last season and you had some players which were clearly Deans and some players which were clearly Suso's. Um, and, you know, I think the reason where, you know, yes, we could have gone and got a lot better value, in my opinion, on the continent or even in the Premier League than we have for Ali Watkins. But I think the club is keen to reward Dean with his faith in using players that weren't his, in putting them into a system which ultimately, you know, it wasn't pretty at times kept us in the Premier League and I think this is the club's way of saying right thank you for keeping us in the Premier League he's the man you'll want we're going to go all guns blazing no matter the thing to get you your man and um, it puts a pressure on Dean Smith it, it puts a pressure on Ali Watkins too um, and, but as you say mate I think the fact that he's had this journeyman career will, will really help him um, you know everywhere he's gone he's been able to make that step up this is probably the biggest step that he's had and I think of all that fee Villa fans are going to want a top at least 15 goals all comps next season yeah. you know if you're, if you're going to if it does go to 33 million I think that you know regardless of where you come from that's what's expected of you um, so it's, it's a big mantle to step up to but you know it's not like he's got too big of boots to step into um, you know neither of our strikers did too well in front of goal last season shout out words still love you mate um, <laughs> but uh, yeah hopefully Ali's the man to, to turn this tide around I'm absolutely delighted to see a sign a striker as you said position that we desperately wanted to see it should make Villa a lot more attractive to watch, which I think is a big plus. And um, with Josh King being touted around today, mate, I'm sure we'll discuss that in proper on, on our next uh, room of a podcast. But um, the thought of Watkins next to Josh King with Jack in behind, do like that. Absolutely. It, it just, it makes sense. And it, I'm so happy like you and many other Villa fans that this deal is finally over the line. You know, it, it's similar stats to Tammy and as well. So you've got to consider Tammy in the championship uh, took about 10 penalties. So, um, you know, no Tammy slander whatsoever. The guy is an absolute hero in my eyes and, you know, would, would welcome him with open arms to the Villa, but so happy that we've signed Watkins. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good note to end this little video on. Thank sure. you guys uh, for all of your support. Again, I mean, the, the last podcast has only been out for over, you know, 24 hours and again, 2000 views. You guys are amazing, really are the best. So comment your thoughts below, what you think of the signing of Ollie Watkins. I can imagine a lot of people are just glad that this saga is over and it's ended in, you know, yep. without actually signing someone because it's been, it's been the story of the summer, it's been the story of last summer as well. So uh, thank God we've actually signed Watkins. Uh, and as well, I believe we actually just passed 2,200 subscribers as well. So again, thank you guys for that. Let's keep growing, let's keep pushing. Uh, and hopefully Villa will make a few more signings as well. Not got long to the season starts. So important that we've got Watkins uh, in and can bed in before the Sheffield United game. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed, subscribe for more and up the Villa. He's the main leader of the gang now.